Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our geometry skill. Today is our day number four, lesson number four. Today we'll talk about the concept of figuring out volume of a rectangular box. Volume of a rectangular box. We talked about yesterday, yesterday, yesterday we talked about figuring out the surface area of a rectangular box. And the same box that I was holding yesterday in my hand here is a rectangular box. As you can see there, here is your length, here is your height, and uh, where is the width? And there is your width. width. Which one you call which, what well, doesn't really matter because the three quantities are going to be multiplied. So when you multiply uh, some numbers, uh, it doesn't matter which one you call what because you're going to get the same results. Uh, same thing happens if you add them. If you're subtracting something or if you're dividing something, it does matter as, as to which one you call which because uh, you don't want to end up dividing A by B when you meant to divide B by A. So there it matters what you call A and what you call B. But if you're going to multiply A and B, it doesn't really matter which one you call A and which one you call B. Same thing here. Yeah, which one you call length, even if I end up calling this one length, it's not going to do any harm. But the tradition dictates that I call the longest part the length. Here's your length, here's your height, and here's the depth. Sometimes we call it the depth, sometimes we call it the width. How deep it is, well, how deep it is will be actually this one. If I'm going to call it depth, depth will be synonymous with the height. How deep it is, how wide it is, and how long it is. And that's that's what the three things we need to know in order to figure out the volume of a rectangular box. But before we go into this thing, I want you to understand first of all something more fundamental than that, which is that the concept that volume. The figuring out the number is not a difficult part. Everybody can do that. Multiply the length, uh, length times width times height. That's not the point here. The point I'm trying to make you understand is something that I do not find a lot of the times uh, uh, understanding uh, among the students, which is volume of anything anything it doesn't matter what it is as long as soon as you use the word volume volume of anything has to be unit cube it has to be the cent centimeter cubed has to be feet cubed has to be meter cubed has to be yard cubed it has to be uh, what else we, can we say here? Could be miles cubed. I said cube, but I put down square there, didn't I? Whatever the unit is, the unit has to be cubed. The question is why? The question is why? Because the unit has to be cubed because volume is a three-dimensional concept. Volume is a three-dimensional concept. For example, volume of this box here that, that is left over from yesterday, from day number three when we were dealing with this uh, rectangular box here, we have length, the volume is going to be the length times width times height. The length is seven feet, the width is four feet, how wide it is is four feet, and how high it is, the height is three feet, so here we get 7 times 3 is 21, times 4, and then I get, and then we get feet times feet times feet, feet times feet times feet. And you mustn't forget this part. This is the important part. This is the most important part because without this part, it has no meaning. Before, before I go any further, allow me to digress just for a second here. And for those of you who still do not know what digress means, you can go to page. Uh, you can go to my vocabulary video. I believe it was page number. It was day number three. Just type in Keshwani Trap dash vocab dash day three, just like here geometry and then dash and day day three, and you learned about digress, which means to go off topic. Allow me to just digress for one second here, just for one second. In case you're curious as to why I wrote this as 21 times 4, 
There is a reason for it. You see, what I had to figure out was, what I had to figure out was 7 times 4 times 3. Now you have two choices. You can either reach for your calculator or you can use your brain. I would much rather see you use your brain. Don't reach for the calculator. Leave the bloody thing alone. Give it a rest. So if I'm going to do it in my head, I could do 7 times 4. I know what 7 times 4 is. It's 28. But then trying to figure out 28 times 3, uh, for some strange reason I did not like it. I, I'd much rather do it 7 times 3, which is 21, times 4. And then I find easier because 20 times 4 is 20 times 4 is 80, and then 1 times 4 is 4, so 84. That's going to be very easy. That's why I did it, in case you're wondering why. We could have done the other way around, it's not a big deal. We could have done it, we could have done the way the way it was, in the order that it was written, which is 7 times 4 is 28, times 3, which of course is also not that bad, because you can break up 28 into 25 times 3 and 3 times 3. I'm breaking up 28 into 25 and 3. You see? It's the same as 25 plus 3 times 3. So you open the parenthesis, 25 times 3 and then 3 times 3. Right there. 25 times 3 is 75. 75 plus 9. Plus, I know 75 plus 10 is 85. So 75 plus 9 must be 84. Well, there you go. But that, that was a little digression there. These are small, tiny techniques that you have to master if you want to improve your math skill, if you want to have any hope at all of getting a decent score on the SAT, GRE or GMAT, whichever exam that you are preparing for. Because if you reach for the calculator every two seconds, that's not a sign of somebody who's going to get a good score. During the exam, if I see a student reaching for the calculator every five seconds, that's, that's not, I, know, I, I do not know who in the class full of students who are taking the exam. If you ask me who is going to get the uh, good grade, good score, I cannot tell by looking at their faces, uh, by looking at them. But I can tell you who is going to get a poor score. The poor, poor score is going to be gotten by the person who is reaching for the bloody calculator every five seconds. That is the, that's the giveaway that that person is going to bomb the exam. Because the person is not using his or her brain. If you have to reach for the calculator every 5, 10 seconds, 30 seconds to do small calculations, that's an indication that you have a very poor math skill. That's not an indication that you're so sophisticated that you can use your calculator. Do you understand? Leave it, leave it alone. Give it a rest, as I said. So, now we have to figure out feet times feet times feet. What is feet times feet times feet? Well, what is 2 times 2 times 2? Two? 2 times 2 times 2 is 2 cubed. Same thing here, feet times feet times feet is feet cubed. So this quantity is actually this quantity is actually 84 feet cubed. But here's the but part. But the convention dictates let's see when did we learn about convention? I believe it was day number 46 if I correct, remember it correctly from two days ago. What does the word convention mean? The word convention has two meanings. The word convention has two meanings. The first meaning of the word convention almost everybody knows, which is a, which is a gathering, a meeting, a powwow, if you like. The second meaning of the word convention is tradition. Tradition. And if you want to learn the word properly, go to, go to Day number 46, just type in Keshwani Prep dash vocab dash day 46 and you will learn the word convention. Now when I say, when I say if you want to learn the word convention properly, what I mean by if is that, what I mean by the word if is, you want to learn the word properly. Do you understand? Go and watch the video on day number 46 and you're going to learn the word convention along with a whole bunch of other good words that you should know, which will help you improve your vocabulary for the SAT, GRE and the GMAT any of the exams that you're preparing for. Okay? It does not hurt, as I've said many times before, to improve your vocabulary at the same time while you're doing them some math problem. It doesn't hurt it. So anyway, so technically speaking, strictly speaking, mathematicians would tell you that this quantity should be read as 84 feet cubed. 84 feet cubed, just like here. You would read this as 2 cubed. But convention dictates, tradition dictates, that I read this as 84 cubic feet. Don't ask me why. That's just the way it is. That's just how language developed. Here you would not say cubic 2, would you? 
Of course not. You would not read this as we would not really read this as cubic five. We would not read this as cubic five, would we? Of course not. We would read this as five cubed. Similarly, this should be read as meter cubed. But for some strange reason, the way the language developed, the convention dictates, the tradition dictates that I read this as not meter cubed, but cubic meter. Cubic meter. So this is 84 cubic feet. Volume of anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Volume of anything. Because it is always a three-dimensional concept, that's what a volume is. What is the volume? We didn't talk. To, we did not actually talk about it in detail. What is the vol? What does it mean when you say volume of something? Well, volume of something means how much stuff can you put in it? How much stuff you can put something put in something means that thing, whatever it is, has to have some depth, has to have some width, and has to have some length. It is a three-dimensional concept. Of course, if you're talking about something spherical, something it is a different story. But it still is. It's a three-dimensional concept. You can feel and touch it. It is tactile. You can touch and feel it. I do not believe we have learned about tactile. I'm going to put it in my list, and we'll learn it in the future. Tactile simply means you can something that you can feel and touch. This this is a three-dimensional three-dimensional thing, and I can feel and touch it, as opposed to two-dimensional thing, which is a uh, it's just two dimensional. It, 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 you cannot pick it up. If you could pick it up, it would be a three dimensional thing. Because in order to pick it up, it would have to have some some depth to it. So three, anything that is three dimensional has to be something cubic. Cubic feet, cubic yard, cubic inches, cubic meter, cubic mile, cubic something. If you're talking about the volume of the Grand Canyon, how much space is in the Grand Canyon, you would measure something like that, not in the cubic inches, because if you did that, it's a very huge quantity. You're not going to measure it in cubic yard. You can measure it in cubic miles if you like. You know that will tell you how many cubic. Uh, what's the volume of the of the hole in the ground? Do you understand? Or you can talk about the volume of a uh, a lake in cubic yard. And that's what that is. So this thing has 84. This thing has a volume of this box, this rectangular box, has a volume of 84 cubic feet. What do we have for tomorrow? Or oh, tomorrow we will talk about how to figure out a volume of a cylinder as opposed to a rectangular box. If you have a if you have a circular cylinder, how do you go about finding the volume of a circular cylinder? That is, that is how do you go about it without having to memorize the formula. I hate having to memorize formulas. I want you to, I want you to understand the bloody thing. I don't want you to go around memorizing 20,000 formulas for the exam. I'm exaggerating, even 20 formulas will be too much. Just understand the bloody thing, don't memorize it. So tomorrow we will learn how to figure out the volume of a circular cylinder. Okay. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, you can go to any of these website addresses that you see there and send me an email. Or you can go to kashmaniprint.com and send me an email from there. Alright, thanks.